Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I'm <clears throat> glad to see you in the building. Last night was a little glitch. And actually, it's been going a little crazy lately. The people have been telling me they're not getting my notifications. But, you know, hopefully the people will come in the building. You know, for the most part, I'm usually here Monday through Friday, uh, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come on through. And as you come through, hit the like button. But I want to say this to y'all. The diva hit 35K today. Okay, I'm at 35k and counting. My goal is by the end of the year, I will be at 100k. So if you're not a subscriber, subscribe, hit the like button because y'all are the passengers, okay? And the passengers need to purchase a ticket on this train ride because we're going to get into it. And listen, we let you know ahead of time over here. Um, buckle your seatbelt. Buckle your seatbelt because we are not responsible for anything that may happen to you. Sometimes the train sh stops short. Uh -huh. Sometimes the train crashes and burns. And sometimes it gets a little shaky. No, just a little shake, shake. But we want you to hold on and hold tight. So buckle your seatbelt. Now, tonight's trending topic is totally outrageous. Like, totally outrageous behavior come on sebastian sign your rave when you, you come over here because we ain't got it we you can't be suing us we don't got the money no we do not so sign your waiver purchase your ticket and buckle your seatbelt uh-huh so it's totally outrageous behavior because there's a woman who literally went to a bank with a corpse telling the bank this was his uncle her uncle she was literally talking to him, holding his head up, and trying to get him to sign a loan. What is going on with the people that they that desperate for some money now that you're going to prop up a corpse, will the corpse into the bank, and try to get a loan and let that person co-sign? Totally outrageous behavior. Then we're going to talk about this teacher. This kid, he slapped the piss out of the teacher twice. You, you, I mean, protect the teachers. Somebody say hashtag protect the teachers. He smacked the mess out of her. See, you know what? I couldn't be a teacher these days. The kids would just have to be straight stupid because I'm not dealing with nobody and their bad kids. I mean, where, where does this happen at? Do we need security in every single classroom? That's the only way I would teach. I want an armed security guard in my classroom with me at all times. Come on now, protect the teachers. He slapped the mess out of her. And slapped her twice. And she was calm. She didn't get up. She didn't try to beat him up. She didn't try to do anything. He would be banned from any school and classroom I'm teaching in. Protect the teachers. Totally outrageous behavior. Then this man in Target. I mean, people are sick and psychotic. For real. This man in Target. He dropped it. This woman is bending down. She had a skirt on. He drops down, drops his phone on the uh, on the floor, pushes it underneath her skirt so he could try to record her. Sir, just go home on your computer and pay to see said things if that's what you want to see. You out in the stores in the Target when somebody's just trying to mind their business. And you trying to record them? He got busted. And now they charge him. And he had a whole girlfriend at home. Sick. Totally outrageous behavior. Sick. Yes, he did. He dropped the phone down, bent down, slid it under her, and was trying to record her. Then he tried to act like, no, I, I did I do that? I didn't do nothing. Yes, you did, sir. And, and the target cameras caught you. And now where are you going to work? Now what you going to do? 
where you could have sat in the comfort on your in your home. Come on, right, right, and just pay for it online. Matter of fact, if you got Netflix, HBO, Showtime, matter of fact, just regular TV now, they showing and doing the most. How about forget about TV? You could go on your Instagram, your Facebook, and you could see a whole lot of stuff without even harming anybody and getting yourself clinked up. Yeah, he got arrested. He's a big dummy. So you in Target walking around waiting to see if you see somebody with a skirt on? Come on now, this is just stupid when you got the whole internet. And you don't even have to do, you can sit in your car and your phone. I mean, how stupid are people now? Just dumb. Stupid, nasty, totally outrageous behavior. I was like, this guy has got to be dumb. And I go back to this kid that slapped the teacher. What is going on in your household that you that angry that you're going to slap a teacher? And everybody in the class laughing. Well, when his butt got arrested, I wonder if he was laughing then. Oh, in my opinion, you said TikTok too. For free. Get a username and you can see it all for free. And if you want to see some upgraded mess, go to uh, uh, OnlyFans. He got options. And if you have to see it live, go to a strip club. They everywhere. And you see it live. But no, you sneaking around in Target, the family store. He done tainted my Target now. I love Target. I got to worry about Target and people walking around with trying to do something crazy with their phones. Now you got to go food shopping with, with three pairs of sweatpants on, nine sweaters, afraid somebody going to try to violate you, take a video of you. They should put signs up on the spot. You're in trouble. Sick of these people. They making the world so bad for us. We just want to live and be happy. That's it. And then you got these individuals out here. A crazy woman. For $3,000 in change, she really wrote a corpse into the bank. <laughs> I mean, you can't be serious. Child, I'm going to be watching out for that fool. I love Target. Tating my Target. Now I got to have this memory in my head of that nasty fool. But listen, guys, y'all know what I need in the chat, right? I need a what? I need a choo-choo. All aboard, everybody. It is Wednesday night. They call, I mean, Wednesday night. They call it hump day, right? We're almost to our weekend, okay? It's Wednesday night trending topics, and the title is totally outrageous somebody put in the chat hashtag totally outrageous we're going to talk about that crazy woman now you didn't get three thousand dollars but you got locked up we're going to talk about the kid that slapped the teacher uh-huh slapped the teacher no so you didn't you you had fun your friends were laughing but now you got clinked up in this stupid man in target Everything you was trying to see and do, you could have got it for free, but you want to go and target, and now you behind bars. Listen, guys, I'm going to go ahead and bring the people on the building. Hey, Leo. Hey, Diva. Outrageous behavior. Outrageous. Come on now. Hey, in my opinion. Hey, Diva. Congratulations. Choo-choo. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of y'all. 35K. Hey, E. Hola, como estas? Come on now, right now. Wayne. Hola, como estas? Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> y'all talking, y'all talking. Listen, I love you. Hey, the panel. Yes, yes. Hey, everybody, hit that like button, hit that like button, okay? Okay, let's get right into these stories here. We're going to start out with this crazy lady. Okay, everybody just um, mute your line, please. So, um, uh, yeah, till I get through the story. Okay, we're gonna start with this crazy lady because I, 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 
I, I, when I saw this story, I said, this, this, you have got to be kidding me right now. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. So, so let's, okay, hold on one second here. Why is it not? Let's do that. Oh my. She literally had a corpse. That's, you ain't nine. Oh my. I don't know, but I found these results on search. Okay. man's corpse into the bank to co-sign a loan for her. And she going to talk about, uncle, are you listening? She was dead serious. In a mind-boggling scene straight out of Weekends from at Bernie's, a Brazilian woman reportedly willed the course of an elderly man into a Rio de Janeiro bank Tuesday to try to get him to co-sign on the loan. The bank customer identified as Erica was captured on video standing next to the deceased seated in the chair and seemingly holding up his drooping head. She had him in the wheelchair. This, this woman is sick. The wild footage was, was first aired by TV um, in Brazil, lo largest broadcaster, Captain Nunes, talking to the dead man who she addressed as her uncle and asking him to sign financial documents that would allow her to take out a $3,400 loan. Uncle, are you listening? You need to sign the loan contract. If you don't sign, there's no way because I can't sign for you. Um, she says in the video while thrusting a pen between his limp fingers and instructing him to hold it hard. Sign, so you don't give me any more headaches. I can't take it anymore, she adds. When a bank worker tries to point out that the man color looks off and he appears not well, she dismisses his, her, his concerns. He's like that. He doesn't say anything, Nuna says. Uncle, do you want to get to the go to the hospital again? Unnerved bank staffers um, quickly called the police who arrived and arrested her. It was later determined that the descendant, identified as 68-year-old Paulio, um, had been dead for several hours prior to the trip to the bank. She tried to pretend, she tried to, pretend to get him to sign a loan. He already entered the bank dead, police chief said. The main thing is to continue the investigation to identify other family members and find out more about this loan. Cops said they will look into the circumstances of his death and will try to determine whether she is actually his niece and whether other relatives were involved in the alleged attempt to commit bank fraud. She could face charges of theft um, through fraud or embezzlement and abuse of corpse. Ooh, ooh, totally outrageous behavior. Leo, what are your thoughts? You know, in uh, in the clip that you show, <clears throat> excuse me, I see a lot of people is trying to do this thing with the with, with the unalive bodies. I don't know what that is. Who does that? Why? You, the, the, uh, yikes! <laughs> yikes! Who are these people to get this little bit of money? And you toting around a dead body. I people have lost their ever loving mind mm -hmm. to get a little bit of change. A little bit of change. It's not like these people are millionaires, buku millionaires, billionaires, a few thousand dollars. They're not really even trying to get no whole bunch of money. Enough to tote around a daggone dead body to the teller, to the bank, to the drive through Insane, right? It is, it is, it's just too much. People too much. People are so crazy. Where is people's moral compass? Why do not people feel like, where is it that you emotionally morally physically what is it that's happening in your brain and your mind and your spirit that you're gonna tote around to everybody to get you some money get you some money then going could be calling him uncle i bet you that's not her uncle 
Of course it's not her mm -hmm. uncle. Of course it's not. She probably was the caregiver. And as soon as he croaked, she took him to the bank. Oh, my God. She, you know, she probably was the private duty person. I mean, and the look in her face was, yeah, I'm trying to get the coin. You don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> These people are crazy. God crazy. help us. God help us, okay? Um, in my opinion, you're up. Listen here, people. Get your mental health check because this lady, she got to be mental. Um, weekend at the burn is, is an understatement for this one. Uh, I don't even know what she thought was going to happen. Like, did she think he was going to come alive to sign the document? Because that was the part that was getting me. I'm like, she was like, Uncle signing and now we can't get the money. And I'm like, girl, he gone. He can't get up to do it and sign it. Like, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to pray for these people out here because there's some crazy people in this world. Get, get y'all mental in check. Get your mental health check. She's psychotic. Um, Sebastian? Oh, this disgusts me so much. This this is just... Uh, and you know, I can't believe this is happening in Brazil. Um, My mother's from there. This is... Uh, oh, no. I can't. Uh, it's just so... I don't know like I, I have a fear of dead bodies and dead people so like just seeing this man well we didn't see him but like just seeing imagine the people that she was around in the streets and just pushing an, a man who's not even well n no a, a body not oh, a man yeah. a oh, corpse yeah. in the street in a wheelchair and she's like a senior a senior tío, a senior. like it's just oh my god oh my god She's not the, I don't think she's the niece. I don't think she's the niece at all. No. I don't think she's the niece. I do think if she was the niece, she wouldn't worry about money. She knows she would have got something a little bit. This was the caretaker, most likely, who just wanted a little easy change. Well, if you were a good caretaker, you should have made sure he stayed alive. But that's that. That's my end to this. Thank you, Sebastian. Wayne, you're up. Uh, you know, this seems to be like I was, I was just on Google, mm -hmm. and she ain't the only one. And I think I thought you was gonna do this story on. I read an article just a couple of days ago. The woman took the the man. I think through the drive through to cash his social security check, and he was deceased. I saw that one. I saw that one. Yeah, I, I'm like, I Whew. I don't understand it, but uh, I mean, uh, people saying, you know, well, how do you ride around with the person that but they can't hurt you? <laughs> They ain't hurt nobody. They just trying to get away and trying to be slick. And that woman was probably trying to get to the bank fast enough because he said he had been passed only a few hours. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she either she was like, you know, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it. And then before you know it, he didn't croak. So that's how desperate she was to get the, get the money. And that was down in Brazil. You know, so I'm not really, because they do a lot of things for money down in Brazil. So I'm not, I wouldn't, I'm, mm. I'm not going to say I'm not shocked, but like my mother says, she got more nerves than Carter got liver pills. Ooh. Well, it was just, ooh, she don't need to worry about money now. Um, E, you're up. Yeah, his hair was rolling all over the place. I'm sure he had to start it to, uh, 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 what you call it, started kicking in. His body was stiffening. Oh, my God. This Rigor mortis. Yeah. Rigor mortis. Uh -huh. And his yeah. hair probably was bad. Oh, my goodness. E? Well, um, I don't know why we're shocked that this okay. happened in Brazil. Um, slavery lasted over 300 years in Brazil. They imported over 4 million Africans into the country for free labor under horrendous conditions. So if they can do that to human beings who are alive, I don't put any, anything past what they will do to the dead. But that Brazilian woman should have spoken to Wendy Williams' conservator because what you should have known is that you didn't need to drag around that dead body and tote it in that hot car and prop the neck up at the uh, desk to get the paperwork. All you needed was the power of attorney and all you needed was an attorney friend to go in there and sign the papers. You're doing too much and you're going to jail. Bye. Bye. Now, hold on, guys, because this this video, hold on, let me see if I can share a screen here. Oh, God. Is it has to do with this woman? <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, what was I going to say to you? Oh, maybe uh, uh, turn off your camera or something, uh, uh, Sebastian. Hold on. She was sick. He is obviously unalive. So pale. He grows sick, but she told us he's still here. No view. She looked like a street woman. Oh my god, the, the teller just said that. What the teller say? What the teller say, Sebastian? He said he doesn't look okay. <laughs> É, não tá bem não. Ó, a corzinha não tá ficando. Mas ele é assim. É. É. Não tá não. If she's the caretaker, it looks like she starved him. She's a hot mess. Um, um, Katrina, you're up. Hello, good evening, y'all. Y'all forgot to mention the, the most important part. If she had got him to sign those loan documents, she would have had free money. Because she would have probably told them, called back up and said he had passed away. So therefore, she ain't got to pay the money back. Because she already knew he was dead. So by him, if, he, if that thing would have went through, she would have had free money. She was because, trying to co-sign. She would. She wouldn't have had no free money. She says she probably wouldn't. He never was trying to co, but he was the co, he was the main. He was the co-signer, right? So both times it always fall back on the co-signer. Even if she didn't pay it back, it was gonna fall back on him. But she if he's gone, she's the only one that can pay back. That part, yeah. Went. But he, well, I'm just saying, she needed if she needed a co-signer, she was she has a history of not paying to begin with. There right? you go. That's why she couldn't get it on her own. So she wasn't playing to see if it's gonna follow on that cosigner, even though he's dead or whatsoever, they was gonna wipe that dead out unless things didn't change. But either way, that's the most sickest shit. I mean, sickest stuff I ever seen. Yeah, yeah. You're on a lie. That's the most sickest stuff I've seen. But that's that's not the only thing. These folks are always doing it. Remember the man was had his mom down in the basement, she was dead when he was still collecting her social security checks. And the folks uh, re uh realized the smell, the smell was getting outrageous. I ain't said on a lie. I ain't saying about no dick. Okay, unalive. So the smell was getting out, uh, getting outrageous, and um, they do this all the time for money. This is not the first case, but this is the most brazen case I've seen. The told around a dead, I mean, unalive person, and coming to the bank to try to get money, seeing that that man can do. What she thought the folks gonna say? Oh, he just really, really sleepy. Lady, please, yeah. That thirty four hundred. I don't know. If she thought they was gonna say you could go ahead and sign for him. I mean, that's what she probably thought they was gonna say. I guarantee you she was thinking on that level too. But the thing of it is now she had messed herself up. That thirty four hundred dollars that you got from that bank, you finna pay double to try to get out that uh to try to get out your legal fees. So you really messed up. And that's ridiculous. And that's what she need to do. She need to be paying back them legal fees for trying to uh get somebody to sign a loan is already dead. I'm mean, on alive. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. But that's all. I'm done. Thank you, Doctor Love you up. Yes, personally, I think she's a sugar mama and um, she was serving him. I don't think she was his assistant at all. <laughs> she really looked like um, um, a street walker. So, yeah, and she couldn't get any more money. And I guess she figured um, she kind of looked like she was on drugs, too. So she figured she was going to take him to the bank and I do think she feel like they were going to tell her to go on the sign for him and they walk on out of there or roll on out of there. But, but it's really crazy that people are doing this nowadays. Like she's not the first, it's like a lot of people have been doing this 
So, hey Siri, if I have so if I'm a, if two people is on a loan and huh? the cosigner die, Katrina, you ain't muted. I, love, I just muted her. Oh, I'll say my name not Siri. Okay. Um <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Um this is too much, but yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, Dr. Take <laughs> take. Oh, God. Everybody is doing for money. This is no longer to get no jaw like it used to no more. Do everybody see how she hold his head like that and hold his uh, hand because he's not breathing? He's on the life. I bet you this ain't her first one either. What? in the world is going on around here it that part would be the niece right there i'm thinking wow all i see hope they lock her up she locked her up she locked her um, up mm -hmm. well well hope she get life you know what i mean yes i do <laughs> yeah this is wow, wow. Mm -mm -mm. All I say, I'm shook my head for this right here. Wow. Day two. Yes, Sebastian. Okay, I want to just say this disclaimer real quick. Um, mm. Everyone, do not make this instance make you have a whole general thought of Brazil. Brazil is a very beautiful country. I recommend everyone go to Brazil. Um, I think my mother's from there. Um, I recommend everyone go there. It's a beautiful country, beautiful people. In Brazil, people come from, people are all shades. You will definitely find someone who looks like you or anything. And you know, it's just, it's so beautiful. It's so tropical. There's cold parts, just warm parts. So please, everyone consider taking a trip to Brazil. I appreciate you. Um, Sebastian said, hashtag. Just don't go with nobody that's gonna, that's gonna take you into the bank. That part. All right, y'all. I'm gonna roll right into this next story. Now, this is kind of crazy. Um, this North Carolina high school student um cold slapped his teacher twice, and then and the, and the kids in the classroom just are laughing. But now he, I, I wonder. Now I wonder if he's laughing now because his butt is locked up. Oh wait, so wait. That's not. That's the wrong one. Let me stop sharing. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Here we go. So we'll look at the video first. Very sad. One more time. Oh! You think that affected me anyway? Let me hit you again. Let me hit you again. I don't want it. You want me to hit you again? I don't want it. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 And if y'all remember, most of those stories, unfortunately, we did. Yes, um, we did. Sad. Very sad. So a North Carolina high school student was charged after he allegedly slapped, allegedly we see it, his teacher multiple times during a viral profanity-laced um, classroom rant earlier this week. The Raysville youngster identified as a minor confronted the educator in Parkland High School in Western, Western Salem, um, where he violently attacked her, according to the video posted to social media. 
After the initial impact, the teacher seemed unfazed by the slap as the student continued to run his mouth. Do you think that affected me anyway? The unidentified teacher said, sitting back in a chair, legs crossed. I wouldn't have said nothing to him. I would have left. Um, want, um, want me to hit you again? The juvenile asked as he um, menacingly approached the teacher. I don't want it, the teacher answered before being hit again, this time from the right side. The second blow knocks the sitting instructor's um, glasses off her face. The F's wrong with you. What you going to do? Still sit in that chair because you a B? Ain't nobody even coming. You got slapped, says the, t um, the student, seemingly singing and dancing. B, go back to teaching. Students behind the camera reacted to the slaps with laughter amid the classroom assault. The school um, district com, um, condemned the teacher uh, the student's behavior. The behavior will not be tolerated at no time. Is it acceptable for students to put their hands on the teacher in Western Selling on um, Forest County Schools? Um, the superintendent, Trisha McManus, said, according to the news, my focus now is making sure that our teacher is taken care of and has the support needed to navigate through the lasting effects of this incident. On Tuesday, a secure, um, a secure custody order was issued for, the, for three misdemeanor charges against the student for assault on a government official. He was charged with one count of communicating threats and two counts of misdemeanor assault, the county's office announced. While we all agree that this incident was deplorable and outrageous to the community and community organizations, all of us should be outraged when these, um, when those who educate us can be assaulted, the sheriff said. We should hold those who teach and educate our children to the highest regard. Our hope and our prayer at the, um, at the school is that we re um, recognize that we as a community must bring order not only to our community, but our children. We are praying for wholeness for those students who witnessed this and the educator involved. Parkland High School Principal Noel, um, warned the student would face disciplinary action along with criminal charges. He should be, uh, uh, um, what is what do you call, kicked out of the school. I don't know what the proper word is. It's spelled. It's spelled. Spelled. It's yes. Um, he also said, also reiterated that the behavior doesn't display the school's expectations of its students. Please know this video is not a re um, reflective of our expectations of our students. Um, we are working with district staff to address this immediately, ensure behavior like this is not tolerated in our school, in our district. I feel so bad for that teacher. Um, um, the district attorney, Jim, said within the hour it was posted, he was investigating a now viral video for any criminal behavior. Both the sheriff and myself spent the morning at Parkland High School speaking with the teacher because we want one message to be delivered today. This isn't about the color of your skin. This isn't about your political affiliation. Today is about one thing, sending a message to the teachers out there that law enforcement and district attorney's office support you. We care about the job you do. Nobody goes to work and expects to get assaulted. Whew. How sad is that? Um, Leo, you're up. This is this is so deeply layered to me. I'm gonna say this. I applaud that teacher. Mm. She kept it calm and carried on. There, I, it, we ain't even gonna get into it. I, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I'm gonna just say that. No way. And. These kids as well. Who mm. raising these kids? That part. Who raising these kids? There's nothing that should be going on in that school that you have to react that way. And I promise you, I will bet you that when they call whichever parent, whichever guardian, whomever is responsible for this child, they are asking a question of, well, what did the teacher do? Mm. What did the teacher do? Not understanding that this is unacceptable behavior. You cannot conduct yourself in life. He is growing up. He is a young person that will be that will grow into an adult. This is not oh this, this is so outrageous, outrageous behavior. I cannot believe that kids 
are so angry. Right. I believe the kids are angry, but this angry to not just slap this woman once, but twice. And I also applaud her on her behavior because now she getting ready to get a check at the house. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. She going to be home collecting her check. Mm hmm. She ain't going to have to go in the classroom ever again. They need to protect these teachers, though. Because some of them really love their job. And then you got to encounter students like this. And um, so Ronald seems to have more information. He said it started because it, um, the boy was vaping in class. And once again, you, even though I understand, my goddaughter is a teacher. She got teacher of the year. I'm in North Carolina. She got teacher oh, of the year. Okay. Nice. And um, yeah, that's, that's Winston-Salem. That's the city. And the county is Forsyth. Okay. And so uh, you know, I ain't in shock. You know, in in that, I'm not. I'm shocked, but I'm not surprised because I live in North Carolina and I know how. I told y'all, North Carolina is very, very not different sectors of North Carolina. Different cities can be very violent wow. in, within the black community. Yeah. From what I know of, not everywhere, not one hundred percent. No, I, I'm. You know, I'm connecting with you. I'm connecting. Yeah. So yeah. because I was raised in violence, so I get the violence. But this level, I, I, I it, it, this is a whole nother level of showing off, being territorial, acting out, showing off for the other kids because they laughed. I mean, and, and got kicked out of school and got a charge Oof. that whoever they people are gonna have to go to court and may have to hire an attorney or even if they get a public defender i promise you these young people who raised this young person are asking who else is at fault instead of themselves mm. we have to take responsibility as a whole for raising these children because they have not gotten the message yeah, I applaud. They don't understand that their place in this world is not singular. Everything you do affects other people, not just yourself. They do not mm -hmm. get that this one particular moment is going to affect you for the rest of your life. This particular moment is going to affect the other kids in the class for the rest of their life. It's going to affect this teacher for the rest of her life. Yeah. If we don't protect the the teachers, who's going to teach the kids? Who's going to teach the kids? Who's going to teach the kids? It used to be I was growing up, it was like if your teacher even would dare say like they about to call your mother or you had to um, you know, bring a letter home telling what happened and you had to get it signed, you would have so much fear in you. These kids don't give a crap now. My stomach would be hurting. Child. I had a bubble guts. They call, they talk about they get ready to call my mama. My stomach would hurt. What? What? Oh, no. Do not call. Do not call my mama. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do not do call. Not call. Do not call. Do not call my mama because it's get ready to go down. It's get ready to go all the way down. So it's it. I don't. It's very layered. I can say this. It's very it is, layered. It is very the layered. community's not taking responsibility. And not this particular teacher, but I mean, as a whole, family members, parents, people, it, the society as a whole is not taking responsibility for kids and teaching them the right way of handling their emotions and conflicts in a constructive way. Because this ain't it. And that's all I got. Thank you so much, Leo. Um, Miss BR Girl um, um, 09, I teach in Brooklyn. I did five years in the Bronx and 17 years in Brooklyn, 22 years. God is good. Well, do you know what? God bless you. God bless you. Do you know, so uh, Miss BR, do you know that crossing guard? I did a story the other day. I don't know if you was here Um, because she, the crossing guard is in Brooklyn, the dancing crossing guard. Um, If you do, send me an email if you know who I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to get this Sack Street because I'm going to go see her. Um, um, in my opinion, you're up. Okay. So first of all, let me say to everybody that is an educator, thank you for your service. Oh, yes. It couldn't have been me. Okay. 
I'm just gonna tell you, I don't believe in the rule turn the other cheek. I believe in beat them, beat them down. Okay. And so I give her a lot of props because she sat there and took it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know a lot of people that was gonna sit there and take it. First of all, these kids are acting like this because they're not getting no home training at home. Mm -hmm. And they're learning this at the house. Your house is your first teacher. Whoever is raising you, that's your first teacher. Mm -hmm. And that's where you learn your fundamentals. And mm -hmm. if you train them up the right way, no matter what they go out there and see, they'll never depart from it because you done instilled it in them. It's already there. I'm a firm believer that this kid is not getting the adequate care at home, and that's the reason why he's acting up in the streets. Mm -hmm. But don't worry. This shouldn't have been a misdemeanor charge neither. It should have been a felony. And let him sit in jail and know what it feels like to be an adult that's assaulting people out here in these real streets. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you so much, in my opinion. Um, Sebastian, you up? You see, you see, I want to say this. I want to thank my parents, my mother and father, mm -hmm. for a big reason. Because they instilled many things in me. One was the fear of God. And then the fear of them. Come on now. Um, I went to Catholic school and just not, just by not doing my homework, they would just say, I'm calling your mother or I'm mm -hmm. calling your father. Mm -hmm. I remember crying to my teacher, crying. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. And then I cried so much. And then she was like, okay, okay, I won't call. But I'm guessing this is in high school. Mm -hmm. um, this kid wants to do grown things. He needs to get grown charges. He needs to be locked up. And I don't care if yeah. you want to say... I don't care if people want to say, oh, he's young, he's young. No, no, no. You want to do grown things at a young age? Well, we have to treat you like you're grown. We have to give you grown consequences. You do not get to slap someone, let alone your teacher, yeah. twice, and get away with it. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. This is this is the result of bad parenting, in my opinion. If I, in my opinion, I, be, I don't believe these parents are involved in these kids' lives. And even if he doesn't go to jail, he should never go back to his parents, in my opinion. The thing is, I want this to be known. Check your kids. If you have to beat them, beat them. If you got to take <laughs> Diva, Diva, don't look at me like that. Diva, stop. <laughs> if you have to beat your kids, beat them. Because if you don't beat your kids, the police will beat them for you. Let alone if they're of my shade or 10 times darker, they will be beaten by the police or they'll be beaten in that jail cell. I'm That's telling the right. truth. That's they right. you need to beat your kids so they know right from wrong or the police will and your child will be a statistic on national television or international television and will be the thing that we always see. And then we'll have people out here marching. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Head. Beat your kids. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He has gotten beaten, and that's the reason why he's slapping that teacher. Come on now, Leo. See, so you know no. I, I do not, I personally, but listen, again, remember y'all what I say. Y'all do what y'all do. I personally do not believe in that, and I'm going to be very honest with you. If you read the document information on when you beat kids, whether you do verbal ab abuse to your kids or, or, or you beat your kids, read the documentation on that. It's not a good thing. Let me tell you something. You literally now, and especially now, because most kids have cell phones, this and that, they will pass out. Some of them will rather you put your hands on them than take their cell phone. Because so my thing is there are better ways of talking to your kids and teaching them how to navigate their feelings and navigate the life, the, the, you know, the world. So when you have someone that they learn that putting their hands on somebody um, is the answer, that's what they're going to go in the streets and do. So um, I, I don't believe in that personally. There's other ways. You know, I didn't have all that tension in my house. So I only raised one, but I didn't have all of that tension. Because when I say it, I'm done. I ain't even really going back and forth with you because I'm the mom, right? I said no. And if you know why, because I said so, because I'm the mom and that's it and that's all. Because that's how I was raised. You know, I'm the mom. I'm the, that's it. We, I said no. We said no. And that's it. And you ain't got no more questions after that, right? So I, I'm not one to um, and put my hands on the people. 
I don't think that's the answer. And like I said, don't listen to Diva. Google documented facts on how that's just not a good thing. I think there's so many other ways to solve things and to get an answer. And a lot of times kids are learning really more from not your words, from watching you. Kids learn from watching you. So this kid is out there wilding out, cursing, vaping. Um, he's getting that from somewhere. Either there's a lack of something going on in that home where he feels like he's in the streets doing his own thing. There's more going on where a kid could get that angry and be that disrespectful to adult and to slap the teacher and the way he even slapped that teacher. It, I, I just, I feel horrible for her. It's like, thank God it was on video because there's no dispute in it. But I think I also, my heart breaks because it is on video and it's out there like forever. Um, it's just very sad. Wayne, you're up. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to say is that teachers uh, profession is, probably the most underpaid in the in the united states you know and it's the most important job in the united states because every job that somebody has or whoever they are now 99 percent of them had to go through a teacher before they got anywhere in life okay so uh e you know my hat's off to you Okay, I'm also, I feel opinion, it couldn't have been me. Uh, however, I'm like you, Diva, the hands. Beating came, that's a learned behavior that came from slavery. That's why we do it, because it came from slavery. Because we was beat, so we just passed it on down, and you just beat your kids all the way down. Also, Kids having kids, this is what you get. He probably slaps his mama. <clears throat> his mama probably five years older than him. I'm five years older. I'm screaming. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying, because like when we were, when I was coming up, I mean, that was just unheard of. I mean, I, and you go home, what happened? You didn't even want to tell, tell your mother if you got your hands spanked, you know, Back then, they would, you know, slap your hands with a whatever they did, you know, if you acted up in grade school, you know, but you didn't go home and tell your mama, you know, you told nobody else told her, you know. So this child, I don't see no misdemeanor. I don't know how that could be a misdemeanor. When you put aggressive, when you aggressively, not only that child, all the other pictures that were shown where all this is going on. I mean, the one where the the uh, the person was down and the student was still beating on him and somebody had to go and they couldn't even pull him off of him. This is ridiculous. What they need to do, they need to make it voluntary for the teachers. If you want to come to school with a taser and pepper spray, I may not have put my hands on him, but he'd have been going to the hospital for a cardiac arrest because he couldn't breathe because of the pepper spray. Yes. It's no way on God's creation. I would have sat in that chair. I may have got slept one time, but definitely not two times because all hell would have broke loose on somebody's child. If you grown enough to throw a punch like that, you grown enough to receive one. And that's not a beating. Amen, that's just, Wayne. This, that's just defending yourself. What if he wanted to slap on her some more and some more? I mean, was she supposed to sit there and take it and, oh, no, you know, I shouldn't do anything. Wait, no. So it has to be consequences for these kids who want to act up in school like this Okay, they deny other kids who's on their path to a great uh, education. They're denying them the opportunity to be educated. They cause all these problems in the schools. It is no way their little tails need to be put out the school 
And they need to go like back in when we used to do reform school. Okay, they don't need to be reformed in the school because they should have been reformed before they got there. Okay, but don't affect my child's learning because you don't want to learn. You need to be in a place where other children that are just like you, somebody that has maybe more influence or whatever they have to do, psychological help. But no, you don't get that help in the classroom. That's supposed to be, you're supposed to have that before you get there. A classroom is, is, is there to be, to learn. And if you don't want to learn and you want to fight, you don't need to be in the classroom. You're a minister of society and you need to be home with your parents or wherever you go. One thing running your mouth at the teacher or whatever, but when it comes to putting the hands on it, no. No, no, it's, it's, it's no way. Thank you. That Rick. was that video in all my 67 years on this earth. I have never seen, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not oblivious as to things that happen. I just never really seen it like this. I mean, like you on a battlefield. It, it, it's, it's very disturbing. And if they don't do something, it's going to be more things going to happen. Some, somebody's going to, some, some teacher is not going to be able to handle it one day and they're going to lose it. I'm done. Thank you, Wayne. Oh my God, 48. I feel like you, my virtue daughter. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Beautiful. Amen. Congratulations to 48. Oh my God. I'm so happy for you. Beautiful. Um, yes. Oh my God. That is such, oh, that's so beautiful. Um, my screen did shift. So E, I think I'm on you. Uh, am I your virtual daughter too? Yes, you are. Oh. Okay. Thank you for your service as an educator, E. Well, thank you. But, you know, I'm going to say this. You mm. know, um, in the package you ran, it said that, you know, the school system, you know, takes these matters seriously and whoop de whoop de whoop. Yeah, it sounded good because, you know, I know someone who was assaulted by a student. A student came up, the woman was sitting at her desk and a student walked up to her and just bopped her on the top of the head just for no reason. And she took him to the office and they sent him to alternative school for three days and then he came right back and was back in her class, just sitting there and, and acted as normal. And so that's a story I've heard from many educators that when these things happen, the kid just comes right on back like nothing happened. And I do think um, even if the school was willing to place that child back in that teacher's classroom, as an adult, you are notified that your child has assaulted an adult. So as the parent, you should request your child not go back because what makes you think that somebody want to look at your little Johnny or your little Lisa and provide them with education after they just assaulted them? I, I want some people to use common sense and realize that when your child goes to an institution of learning, excuse me, it's storming. Oh, wow. Y'all heard that? Mm -hmm. So when you send your child to an institution of learning, your child is a reflection on you. And when an educator calls you on the phone to give you a report and you are defensive, the first thing most people say is that's where the kid gets it from. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of there are a lot of parents who say, oh, I know my child, my child would never do this and whoop de whoop de boo. You don't know what your child will do outside of your presence because some children feel stifled by their parents in their presence and they don't feel they can be who they really are until they get 
out of your sight and amongst their friends and in their own space where they can spread their wings a little bit. So here is my thought on this. There is a way that the IT department can have these videos and images scrubbed from the internet. This is a state government agency and they do have some powerful IT people, believe me. And they could simply copyright the images and restrict it from being distributed. The same way Diddy had that case scrambled down to the court system and the same way those photos of Bill Clinton in the room with that seemingly underage girl allegedly. If you ever post it on Facebook and Instagram, um, and I'm talking about the pictures of Bill Clinton, the platform will automatically remove the photo and give you a warning that your profile will be deleted. They can do the same thing with these videos and images being displayed of violence towards from these kids towards these teachers. And they can wipe it off the internet because the constant circulation of these images can be triggering, embarrassing, yeah. and um, for the teacher, but also inspiring for those who are looking to go viral and get a good laugh. There's yep. no amount of money that can compensate this woman for this emotional uh, distress that she has suffered, in my opinion. And yep. let me say this. These kids know who and who not to play with. I don't care what anybody says. That, that how, part, E. That part. I, yeah. I don't care who... I don't care how they grew up or what type of violence they saw. These kids know who and who not to play with. That black boy slapped that white lady who was sitting down for a reason. Uh, because I'm telling you right now, the educators I know, including myself, the video would not have gone that way. As an adult, the first thing an adult should never do, and Diva, I'm finna steer left so you can go ahead and cover your eyes now. Don't you ever turn the other cheek when a child swings at you, slaps at you or put their hands on you. It teaches these children that is no consequences for their action and it gives them license to think they can hit you again. What did that boy say to that woman on that video? Do you want me to hit you again? After he slapped her because he knew she wasn't going to do anything. And he called her the B word and he slapped her like a dude in the streets for a second time. Now, had that woman stood up and picked up that chair and knocked him to the ground, he would not have been saying another mother, he would not, excuse me, he would not have been saying another word. He would have Amen. been like, yeah, he would, listen, he, we, he would have been like the little girl we talked about last night who had to go to the hospital after being knocked unconscious by the broom handle. Okay, shout out to the mayor, hashtag unbothered. And I want to say this, it's not the teacher's responsibility to wonder after a child strikes them, what has this child been exposed to? Who has hit them at the house? Who has raised them? It's kind of too late for that because when you're, when you are struck as an adult, it's unusual. It's a bizarre feeling. A lot of emotions come into play. And yes, you strive to be professional at all times, but in most cases, most of the adults I know, when someone hits you your natural instinct is to it's, it's like a flinch you 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 swing right back i mean you're going into self-defense mode and not even thinking this is a little person but the way that that little boy hit that woman that wasn't a little boy tap he he swung at her like a grown man and you heard the sound on the audio this is not a little boy um walking up to this woman calling her the B word and punching her twice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what needs to be reiterated when you come in and you, it's a shame that you have to come in and say, Oh, it's not about color. And it's just about the safety of the kids. No, it's too late for that. When a child steps up to an adult, they are doing so at their own risk. And when you put on big boy shoes, you may have some big boy medical bills or a big boy funeral. So, I, I think that a lot of parents should, because there's been a lot of talk on talk on this panel that they a lot of people commend this teacher. I don't think it's to be commended. Um, and in some cases, depending on how how wealthy the school district is, you have to you she will still have to fight her case. I, that's still a process. You don't just get the money right away. She's still being inconvenienced. And I really think people should have a strong conversation with their children about the boundaries between themselves and the adults in the classroom. And one last thing, and I know I'm long-winded and you can leave your comments for someone else. This is important. Um, Wayne said, 
kids who, and thank you, Wayne, for saying this, kids who are this far left and, and need this kind of support and, and this disruptive to the learning environment shouldn't even come. And I agree. And we've had this talk on the panel before, and it comes back to the it comes back to parents knowing some parents know that their children are a lot to handle because they're a lot to handle at, at home. But when they come to school and are totally disruptive to the learning environment, sometimes the parents can't do anything with them and the school district doesn't want to remove them because they don't want to say something is wrong with you. They don't want to make you feel different. So they integrate these personalities that have these challenges in with the people who are really trying to get their education, uh, really trying to learn something, really have um, an inclination to do something with their life and do something special or want to go to college. There are really some good kids out there who are stuck in a classroom with somebody and they can't learn. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid they're going to be bullied. And these kids are looking towards the teacher, the educator, to be their safe haven and be their safe space and keep order and keep the classroom safe and can't even do that because this little terror is running havoc and the teacher has no bandwidth to put these kids out because there's too many of these types of kids in the education system right now who haven't been put out because the school doesn't want to put them out or can't put them out. So I think we need to keep that in mind. And I think we need to, when it's time to vote, uh, go down to those education board meetings because they have them, if not twice a month, I know it's once a month, where you can go down, vote, and tell your superintendent and the people on the board of education what you want in your school system. And I encourage everyone to be vocal about it. It's important. I appreciate you, E. Um, thank you so much. I'm I, I'm coming to um, Dr. Love, but um, I the, the reason why I commend this teacher is she was in a room full of um, all these students. So nobody went and tried to get her help, right? So she was in a room with all these students that was playing into what this um, kid was doing to her. And um, he wanted her to get moved by it, right? Um, and I, I think it would have went way left had she responded differently. It would have oh, wait. Huh? wait, I'm sorry, one last thing, because you're right. She was waiting for assistance. Everybody knows you have that button in your classroom to push. But I can tell you, um, and Leo, you helped me out. You've been trained as a substitute. What they tell, what I was told when I did my training, you tell them to stop three times. If they don't, stop, they, this is if they fight one another. If they don't stop three times, let them fight until somebody come. Don't get involved. It doesn't matter if they hurt themselves. You stay out of it. Um, and also, they sometimes they won't come. Sometimes it'll be 15 minutes. Think about what can happen in 15 minutes, especially if you only have one admin. But, right, but see, so I did school nursing. So the, the thing is with, with these kids, right, and especially you see everybody now, like you said, these kids want to go viral. So no one was concerned enough to even try to help her, right, because they was all videoing it and just laughing. What I'm saying, though, is what I feel for sure if she would have even tried to move her hand, that kid would have did more damage to her and no one probably would have stepped in to even help her. Um, she probably, unfortunately, as hard as it was, saved herself. Um, I think she riled them up even more when she said, um, and I'm not blaming her, right? But I think he got riled up even more because he wanted to see a bad reaction out of her. Like her be like, oh my God, or cry, whatever. Um, when she just still sat there, when he slapped her, I think that got him even more pissed and ramped up. And that's why he was like, you want me to do it again? Like I'll do it again or whatever the case may be. And he said, he clearly said to her, nobody's coming. So you might as well go ahead and continue teaching. Um, I, I, I think I would have tried to leave the room and got on, who knows if he would have still tried to, you know, touch her to that. She was in a very bad position, a very bad position, because it's almost like, to me, her desk was far away from the door. I don't know the room, but the way it was seeming to me, like she was in some corner in that room, and I'm feeling like the door was the other way, and she would have had to pass him. He was violent. He was angry. He was putting on a show for all of his classmates in that room. 
that thing would not, I think it would have got worse for her if she would have even, you know, you know, got up or tried to put her hands on him, unfortunately. So and I know, also, though, Diva, you're right. She's not a fighter. That woman wouldn't had no chance with this yeah. young boy. So no. she did the right thing for herself and her own safety. There was nothing she could have done. She can't. She's not that girl. That's not who she is. And and then you made a point too about her sitting. Um, and and I'm just wondering if you know there was a situation as to why she was sitting or had to be sitting or whatever. Um, it, it was it was a very bad situation for her, but I believe in her situation for her, she did the best thing that probably saved her from that thing being even more violent. He was angry and he was ready to put on a show. And if he would have had the opportunity, he would have beat her down. Um, Dr. Love, you're up. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> um, I do agree with everyone on the panel. I even agree with what you saying um, to Diva about her being in danger. I felt she was in danger just because one, I didn't feel like she knew how to fight. And then two, she would have had to have a weapon to even get up out that classroom. I really do feel that because I feel he would antagonize her or kicked her or hit her more as she tried to leave. Seemed like it would have got worse. Now, I want to say for us parents who maybe have raised some boys, that's a different story, okay? Um, and God knows this is why I, I never, ever wanted to be a teacher like a day in my life. And this is one of the reasons why, because I believe in children and kids respecting all adults to the utmost. I believe in that unless of course an adult is touching you, I'll say that in a certain way. Um, other than that, I do believe in children respecting and then come and get the parent. Cause I, I just looked at the lady sitting there. If, to say she was waiting for the mother to come get this child. But as we know in this situation, um, this not that either, because if that mother was that mother, then that child would have never done that. That child would have never smacked her like that, knowing if he had that type of mother that would have came and disciplined him. So that that wasn't the situation neither. But um, it seems like these these kids need, um, not these kids, I'm sorry, these teachers really need some type of weapon in a classroom. And especially in a high school, and I want to say almost junior high, where these kids are much bigger than you, much stronger than you, um, weapons are needed as if to say the tear gas and the, um, um, what are the things that shock you? Something like that, because what if he would have went further with her? Th that wouldn't have been nice because- but, uh, To be honest with you, if he would have went further with her and she had said situation, that's not going to be safe either, right? Because those pow pals, they don't have a name on it. So she could have pulled the thing and it could have hit the wrong person. I, I, I honestly- No, no, not the pow pals. No, no, not that. About a stun gun. But yeah. e either way though, he could have grabbed it from her. Listen- <laughs> The, the, to me, the answer is either you're going to have a security guard in every room mm -hmm. or you going to do more to have these. This is not this kid, in my opinion, first situation. Mm -hmm. I feel like the kid is a straight menace to society. Mm -hmm. And so they already know that. So even in my and my son went to uh, private schools, right? Even mm -hmm. there, because what happens a lot of time in these private schools because they want the money. A child that is kicked out of every school in their area and district, then, then the parents bring them to the Catholic schools and the private schools, and then they try to wreak havoc there, right? So mm. it's it's like someone has to stand up and say, listen, this kid can't come here anymore. We're, we're not doing this. You, you know, they want these number counts and all of this and all of that. Um, yeah, a security guard in every room is a is 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 a prison, but it's a, it's a safe, it's a safe haven for um the teacher. Mm -hmm. the, or I can tell you when we in the, in the hospital, mm -hmm. when we had a known troubled patient, oh, security lived in, uh, in their room. Mm -hmm. 
we have real they police. Called it, they called it a one on one. Mm -hmm. And we would not do anything with that patient. I'm not going to die. I'm here to save the people, but I'm not going to die while I'm trying to save nobody. I'm not getting beat up by no kid. It's called one to one. And they would have security in the room with that patient and you every 24 seven. You have got to. So nurses are protected in hospitals. You got to protect the teachers. Mm -hmm. Like in the period, nobody should have to fear going to school to teach. Right. Or another thing I'll say for psych, you learn self-defense. You have to. So I don't know, even though teachers are, some of them are much older, but I feel like self-defense classes need to be taught or mandated too, because in TCI, we learn how to take somebody down without hurting them. You know, so I don't know if that could be. To Dr. Love, but see, you know, here's the problem because I was mm -hmm. going to do per diem in the jail. At the end of the day, I don't, you, you could learn all of that stuff. I'm five feet tall. Like, like, so, so, so somebody is six feet taller than me. So th those people in the jail, they all they do all day is go to the gym. They working out. I, okay. That's nice. I know how to take somebody down, but am I going to take them down? The chances mm -hmm. are probably zero to none for me to win that fight right there. So that's why I'm saying you need back up. Yes, you should have those tools under your belt. You should have those defense mechanisms and tools, but you shouldn't have to be going to school with your with your briefcase and your and, and all the defense stuff in your bag to protect yourself while you're trying to teach somebody one, two, three, and ABC. Right. It's not right. Right, which is true, which is so true, but it's at the end of the day, something has to be done. And somehow, like y'all said too, he knew that backup wasn't coming. So did he knew that day that the school was short of security guards? It, it, it's something with that too, to say, yeah, you're not about to get help now because y'all are short without seeing it. So yeah, it's a mess. It's, it's a good a mess. mess. Yeah. Um, e, real quick, because I still got a few people to get through. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, you know, if you remember I said yesterday, if you build the rapport with uh, the people you work with, I said it's, it's natural and it's important, right? On yesterday. Um, and I say that to say this teacher was in this hostile situation. And I agree with you, Diva. There's nothing that she could have done. Um, however, if anybody, when I was in my in my days, if any student even looked like they was going to come at me, I had uh, the captain of the uh, basketball team in my room. If somebody even looked crazy, he said, do you want me to get them? There are kids who will come to your defense and because they don't want no, there these these kids, they kind of become like your babies. Do you get what I'm saying? And they become very protective over you. They don't want nobody talking to you crazy. So it's just... It's, it's, that's the other side of it. That's the only part I wanted to add. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. Um, Katrina, did I come to you already? Um, no. Uh -huh. Okay. The only thing that I'm going to say is you have to blame the government for taking structure out of schools. They've taken structure out of schools. The kids have more authority than the teachers. The same thing at the homes. The kids have more authority at home. Because the government saying, well, you can't whoop your child or I know you you don't go for that, Diva. I understand that. But I'm saying, but if you don't show your child no structure or put discipline in that child, that's a child that I do not want to be around. Because a child with no fear and no conscience, that's a child that will go out there and do anything. And he was already in the, in the classroom vaping, right? What was he vaping? THC or was it cigarettes or whatsoever? Did he get mad because she took his vape pen? And he's already vaping. So the thing of it is, the teachers have no structure to stand on. They don't have that old type uh, teaching uh, experience that we had when we was growing up. Like I was telling them last night, our teachers tell us, walk to the bathroom, keep your mouth closed, wash your hands, go in the lunchroom. You talk in that line. By the time you get back in that room, you getting Betsy. And Betsy was two yardsticks taped together. So therefore, the next day, you know if you say something, you're going to get that spanking. So you're not going to say something. You're going to be quiet. You're going to listen and do what she tells you to do. That's the only thing that I'm saying about that. Like they say, spatter rod, uh, spoil the child. These kids got to have some type of discipline because they only going to find themselves unalive, no career, 
and looking stupid. Because look what he did. What he did, what, what they focus on him? To make the kids laugh? But now look what you did to your life. You trying to make somebody laugh because you want to beat some. I mean, hit somebody. You showing off. But now you've been put out of school. You probably going to get a lawsuit against the parents. And then half the time, the parents will come up to the school. Well, uh, who hit my child? Can nobody hit my child but me? Then I think you should keep your little bad, I mean, your little bad tail child at home. Because these kids are here trying to learn, and your child is causing disruption in the class. This teacher has no structures no more. They're the lowest paid, and it's ridiculous. So basically, they got to be a teacher. They got to be a police officer. They got to be a caregiver. And they got to be a punching bag. Because there was no way he should have been putting his hands on that teacher. And so basically, if he's doing that to that teacher, you can imagine what he probably doing to his mom at home. I hate if he had a girlfriend. Because if you hitting this woman, you'll hit anybody. And that's a sad thing. Like I said, they need to put structures back in the school. You took out prayers, but you can pledge to a flag. Make that make sense. Like I said, the teacher needs structure. The kids need their tail spanked. I'm sorry, Diva. But they need their tail uh, spanked so they would know how to do when they get in the real world. Because you just can't go out putting your hands on anybody. And I'm not saying spanking kids at home would make the uh, abusing them or anything like that. I'm just saying you have to put the fear in your child. Because if your child don't have no fear, that child going to go out there and do anything. That's all I got. Thank you, Katrina. Um, Sebastian, did I come to you already? Yes, you did. And I'm the one who said, beat your kids. Okay. And Wayne, I came to you already, correct? Um, Tay Tay? Well, I agree with everybody what they said. Keep your hands to yourself and option to yourself. Respect your elders. Because this ain't school no more. This is uh mm -mm -mm -mm. the school ain't like what it used to when we grow up no more. Man, these kids being disrespectful. Uh like Kurikino said, spike them. That's all. Yes, Tay Tay. Yes. Thank and you. I'm not appearing yet. Um, Emmanuel. Well, hello, everyone. Okay. Um, listen here. These are my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I agree with E, Sebastian, and Katrina. This is very ridiculous. These kids are very problematic nowadays. The, the teens don't respect authority. Teachers in America are already underpaid and overworked. They're already, you know, very disrespected by the system. And now they got to deal with these crazies hitting them? Oh, no, 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 no. Parents have become very soft nowadays. Like, I've heard that when the teachers call the parents when their kids are misbehaving, the parents want to fight the teachers instead of addressing their child. And let's here's the thing we all have different opinions i understand that but this is my opinion i believe that the bible doesn't lie i think everything in there is correct and i too believe in spare the rod spoil the child listen when i was young and i did something that i wasn't supposed to i was spanked because you know brown parents don't play and I will say, you know, getting disciplined did affect me. It did affect me. And now I suffer from something called respect towards others. So we need to go back to the old school way. Teachers, get your rulers and we need to start hitting. Or like Dr. Love said, maybe get a taser. I believe there's a difference between hitting and abuse. Uh, there is a difference. Um, had this parent probably hit their child, this wouldn't have happened. Now they have a child who looks like a danger to society so i say shame on the kids so, no i'm sorry shame on this kid shame on the parents and shame on the kids that sat in there and were like laughing and recording instead of taking any sort of action so that's what i that's what i believe um i, I agree with the people that spoke before me i really do I mean, 
I'm shocked, but we're going to move on. But let me just tell y'all, y'all got to do some research. The effect of spanking on the brain. Spanking found to impact children's brain response leading to lasting consequences. <laughs> this, this um, using your hands to change behavior, it, it usually doesn't work. I promise you that. And you know what? Um, I will say this, um, Wayne, you said something that touched my soul and I really connected with. You said that thing is learned from slavery. Because we were beaten and we think that's the answer and we continue beating. It's a bad thing, people. Listen, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I would say if you learn anything from me, don't hit your kids. It's not necessary. You can talk that thing through. You can figure that thing out together. You can work it out. Um, I have done it. I, 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 I've never hit my kid. There was no need to. I think it depends on the child. Right. Well, I mean, so hold, on, hold on, guys. Let me say this. Well, your child came from you, so it got to depend on you then. Well, no, it got parents? two parents. Hold on, hold on. Let me say this. Well, two parents, but who's raising the kids in the household? The one or the two? So if it's a, if y'all raising them together, then it's the both of y'all. You got that man. See, there's a thin line. Some people don't know how to how to balance out that line. You got this mayor that you beat this girl with a broomstick to the point where she passed out. Y'all can't. I I don't know in what world where y'all can tell me that that's okay. So, no, where, not so where does it where does it begin and end? Not beating. We saying spanking. Yeah, beating is different. Oh, and I will hold also. On. Hold on, let's talk it. Hold on, let's talk it. What's the difference? Oh, so I speak with my hand. My hand may be heavier than somebody else's. I just think we we going I'm gonna move into the last story because I can. This is a whole. Conversation. I, want, I want to say one last thing. Give me a minute, though, Sebastian. This is a whole conversation we can have for another day. But you know what? Somebody also told me. You know this person that wanted to talk to me. I, you know I don't argue. I, I don't think there's a need. And I think somebody put out there this thing of, um, you know, you're, you're going to have strife. You're going to have arguments. Relationships are hard. I've been in relationships and it wasn't all of this tension. I, I Listen, to me, if we breathe in, we eat in, we're all is good and all is well, what is there to have an argument about? And if you are ready to go because you like somebody besides me, then you go ahead and go on. I'm going to release you to the streets. But this is a conversation we can have for another day. But I'm telling you that you can really live your whole life in harmony if you don't fall into the shenanigans and the nonsense. I promise you the other day, somebody called and told me all the way off. And I said, this. I was like, all right. I got you back. Let me call him back. Yeah, that's how you feel? Okay, good. <laughs> because you know what? I'm not about to bring my peace into where you at. I wish you well. I got you. I understand you. I heard you. I respect you. I still love you. You feel that way and that's all that it is. That's good. But I'm not about to bring myself into that space. And let me say this too. To me, this is my opinion. When you crossing over to different milestones in your age, to me, you got a responsibility to do better and act better. I cannot be in these streets as somebody auntie, somebody's mother, and all of that, and I'm just losing my mind, popping off, acting a straight fool, because where is it going to get me and what is it going to do? I'll forgive you one time, Diva. I love you. No, there's times when I have, I ain't right? nobody perfect. There's times when I have, but I'm just saying on a regular basis, I don't practice those shenanigans. And, you know, we got to, as adults, you know, coming in, this is, I'm on my second half. And if I did quarters, what is this? This, this is two quarters. This would be my second quarter, right? I, I, it's my responsibility to level up. There's no more big mamas out there because the big mamas, they still dropping it like it's hot with their kids, with their nieces, with their nephews, all of that. Now I got to rise up. I got to level up. I got to be that person. 
Um, who was trying to say something to me, and I'm gonna roll into this last. Me, one. Me. I want to. Oh, okay. I want to say one quick thing too. Uh huh. Okay. So the first thing, um, it's me then Emmanuel. Okay, I want to say this. Someone in the comments, I think it's 48 TCO, that mentioned something about the slavery thing and how they beat um, and then how it all stems from that. Well, slaves would beat their kids, so Massa doesn't lynch them. Um, I will say this. It depends on the child, number one. Two, it's only in America. These studies from Harvard and these a lot of these studies, they're only doing them in America, I'm guessing. They haven't done them in country, most likely countries where children have, have been built to have discipline in the, instilled with them because they've been beaten. Till I see they do those studies in those countries, then I'll come and say maybe spanking has an effect. Thank you. It's, you're welcome. It has a bad effect. So so let me ask you this. What, what, what do you think a kid could be doing in a home that is so bad that they deserve a spanking? Smoking, drinking, hitting others. Okay, so Talking okay, hold on. The mama. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all gave me enough there, right? Smoking, drinking, right? Stealing. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Smoking and drinking. Where you think they got that from? School. You think it's all? You think all of that came from outside the home? Absolutely. I know. I know yeah. parents that have yes. full yes. blown bars in their house. I know parents that smoke. And I'm not judging anybody. So you really trying to tell me that all of their bad behaviors came from outside the door? They say if you instill yeah. with the, what you want in that child, when they go outside that door, they still got it in them. So if you instilling that we drinking, we smoking, and we carrying them on as like a fool in the house, we cursing, we everything else like that, do you expect your child to go out and do something different? There are plenty of homes that done none of that, like my home. But I never drink or smoke till I got to college and my roommate offered it and we were having a good time at a party. So once again... You said college. Yeah. You okay. said college. I'm talking high school. And other. So, no, no, no. Hold on, Dr. Love, because I'm having this. I'm being serious here. You, I'm talking about 18 and under. I'm asking you because you're going to beat your college student. That's a whole lot right there. I'm asking you that from birth to 18, what is that child doing that's so bad that you feel that a spanking is going to help them? Somebody talk to me. Stealing, lying. It could be, it could be any little be thing. Well, so, so, so they stealing and lying. Where are they getting that from? No, touching fire or like touching your sockets. That's where it starts. Little stuff like that. They get a little spanking. Exactly. I'll never forget one time I was around five. And I went to, I think it was Walmart, and I you stole a pack of gum. Fire? No, 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 hold on. I was like five, and I stole the pack of gum. I never saw no one steal it, but I just did, and I got spanked because that's not what I was supposed to do. And guess what? I never stole anything from the store ever again. My son. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Now, I'm going to move forward because we got to agree to disagree. Y'all go ahead and continue spanking your kids, your grandkids, and all that. Um, But I won't be putting my hands on nobody that I gave birth to and, and nobody that my kid, you know, a, a wife is going to give birth to. I'm not doing that. I don't feel that that is necessary. I feel that the way you teach them is how they're going to go out in the world and that's how they're going to be. That is just my opinion, but I got to roll into this last story. So hold on one second. Violence begets violence. That's just my opinion. So let me roll into this last story. Where, where the target man at? I might have lost the story. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, Emmanuel. Okay. So the victim speaks out at the horrifying video captures a lead peeping Tom pointing camera up her skirt in Target. Um, this this was just disgusting. Excuse me, what are you doing? No, I just saw you put that underneath her dress.
Attention shoppers, Pervin in aisle three. A, a horrifying video captured the moment an elementary school volunteer. They love to be in the schools. Um, volunteer used a cell phone to upskirt a woman at a North Carolina Target on Monday, an incident the victim described as disorienting. Thomas Elliott, 21, a volunteer at Easton Elementary School, is seen pointing the camera under an unsuspecting shopper's skirt in Greenville store. No matter how much you um, try to think you're going to be prepared for it, it kind of throws you through a loop. When it actually happens, the victim who asked to remain anonymous told the outlet. The woman was unwittingly um, browsing the toy section of the retail store where Elliot um, crouched beside her police um, allege. Well, we ain't got alleged. We saw the video, right? Um, I decided to get up to get up and scoot over. And then at this point, I was not focusing on what I was trying to buy anymore, she said. I was more distracted by him still lingering in the area. Fortunately, another female sh um, shopper was on the lookout and filmed the shocking encounter after she caught Elliot allegedly first following her around the store. The woman shouted out to the pervert and ignored his desperate claims that he wasn't doing anything inappropriate. She alerted store security and later posted the footage, which showed cops placing Elliot in handcuffs. A Pitt County School spokesperson confirmed that the suspect was a volunteer at Easton Elementary School. God only knows which footage she got from that school with those poor little girls. We are disturbed and deeply concerned by the video footage of the individual that has been shared on social media and news outlets. And based on the footage, the individual will not be returning to our campuses as a volunteer or hired as an employee. Thank God. Um, that incident probably saved a lot of young girls. He added that all volunteers and visitors are screened through um, a program that determines if people are S offender databases. The Open Door Church in Winterville um, also told the outlet that Elliot had volunteered there. He, uh, he, he loved the volunteer places probably because he's doing mess. Thomas Elliott was immediately terminated upon notification of his arrest on Monday. The church told um, the news without providing details on exactly what he did there. Authorities said they have not found any inappropriate images of children on Elliott's phone. A search warrant for the device said that he denied any wrongdoing and showed us police the reaching pictures he has on his cell phone. The warrant reportedly sees video files, digital images, text messages, and deleted information that may be recovered via a forensic examination. Elliot was initially charged with just one count of felony um, secret peeping, but police upped the counts to three Tuesday after reviewing the viral video. He was booked under a $20,000 um, secured bond. As a woman is concerning and sickening to watch truthfully, Greenville police spokeswoman Christian um, Hunter told the outlet, we do applaud the woman for capturing this on video and confronting the suspect. She added, I think the key takeaways are being aware of your surroundings at all times, trusting that gut feeling and speaking up when you feel um, some things are off. Elliot, alleged victim, also shared some solemn advice for other women. This is um, this is going on not just in big, crazy cities, but here in smaller places like Greenville. Um, and of course, um, Target did not um, respond to any for any comments. This is just so sad. Another sick, totally outrageous behavior, sick individual. Leo, your thoughts? Listen, look, so today, tonight, here on the train, North Carolina has been highlighted. <laughs> North Carolina, North Kakalaki has been highlighted. highlighted. And so I say this, you know, people in the chat standing up for North Carolina, you know, that's what you, we, we it, it is, it, crazy things happen everywhere. So it is not necessarily particular that it's only happening in North Carolina. Right. It's just being highlighted tonight because they in the news. Right. And as a person who lives in North Carolina, I do know that crazy ish happens in North Carolina, just like Florida, just like Michigan, just like Ohio, just like Alabama. You know, it's 
crazy stuff happens and i'm not surprised and i'm quite sure they might not didn't find the goods on him at that time because he has the complexion for the protection he probably been doing this thing a lot mm -hmm. you know target may have been his hunting ground you know walmart may have been no maybe not walmart but probably Target. He probably been getting a good look up the skirt in in, in, in Tajay. So he's a young man. He gonna get the time. He gonna get the charges. He will. One thing about North Carolina, though, even with the other young man that had the incident with the teacher, they mm -hmm. serious about their charges. I'm quite mm -hmm. sure if it was on the books that a young man would get a felony, he would have been charged with a felony. The thing is, it must not have been on the books for him. Yeah, to be I'm able to get a that. felony. Yeah. So if it's on the books, then he gonna get them charges, and he gonna see that time. He gonna see that judge. And I hope his people got some bail money, and I hope they can pay a lawyer because if he got to go public defender, oh, they throwing him all the way up under the jail. Woo! He talking about what? What you talking about? I'm not doing nothing. Here you were, you nasty. And he hustler. got caught. And got caught. And, and I hope he tell uh, his friends because they probably do the same thing too. They probably got a club sharing the pictures. They probably do, but you know what though? We saved the school and the church because he was volunteering at both. He got a sick problem. Yeah, a child wearing the whole sweatpants and everything else to Target. Okay, you see, and a lot of times if I'm going shopping for clothes, a lot of times I wear leggings because I don't feel like going in the dressing room. And I just slip, you know, stuff over my over my clothes, but that's a mess. E, you're up. Uh, Leo said she hope he got money for a lawyer because if he has a um, a public defender, he gonna be up the creek without a paddle. Well, bring on the public defenders because he needs to be in jail. That's number one. And number two, in the chat when this was playing, I said, oh, he sounds like he didn't get a whooping when he was younger. Because had he got a whooping, then he would have known you don't violate no woman's privacy that way and put no camera under her skirt. Now, this story is personal to me because Emmanuel can tell you, I was in Walmart one day and I had on my workout outfit. I had on my leggings and my sports bra. And my sports bra, it's a Michael Kors workout outfit. And so the sports bra has a zipper. The zipper sometimes slide down a, a little bit. It shows a little cleavage, but I'm still covered. I walked in and there was some old grandpapa uh, at the uh, fruits stand. And when he saw me come in, I, I paid attention to him that he instantly noticed me. And I was thinking, what is this old ass looking at? And so I kept on walking. And so we accidentally ran into each other again on the ice cream aisle because, you know, I had to have my ice cream. And he had his phone propped up on the shopping cart. And he instantly turned down to me and his camera was pointing at me and it was intentional. Both of the hands had the camera aimed at me. This Negro was to either taking pictures or recording my cleavage area. He's a pervert. I didn't even realize that the zipper had like um, moved down that much. And so I instantly, once I realized what he was doing, I was shocked. I was on the phone with Emmanuel. I told him what happened. And I told Emmanuel, I'm going to snap a picture of this person because I'm going to go report him. And I did. I reported him to the manager up front because that was alarming. He had been walking around that store in a army veterans uh army fatigue uniform and they thought he was a veteran and he was so upstanding for the community this man is a predator and this is why when we did a story another time and i believe it was some mother who did not have proper clothes on the child and i said i am against people recording people in the store it's for this particular reason People should not be able to record you. I feel like that should be more than a misdemeanor. People recording your personal image and posting you online or, or using it for predatory reasons, oh, that should be a felony. And they should be under the jail. And one last thing, I learned from the children that just because they deleted 
on their phone, it doesn't delete the file. There are lots of kids who, when they get in trouble, they delete things on their phone and it goes into a hidden drive that most people don't even realize and the photos are there. So just because he showed the cops that phone and there was nothing there, that doesn't mean he deleted it. It goes to the backup drive and it will stay there for 30 days unless that trash is deleted. So that man is a pervert and he needs to be in jail. Yeah, that's why they're doing a forensic on it. So mm -hmm. he, won't, he, won't, he won't get away with it. Um, Wayne, you're up. Give him a whipping, Judge. This sounds like the uh, the substitute teacher traveling around from yesterday. It sounds like he's doing the same thing. Mm, yes, yes. Is this the new thing, you know, to get a job working around kids that where you can go to several different spots? You know, um, it, it, it's, I don't know what to say, that he just, he needs some time. He needs to, whatever they need to do to him, he, they need to get him done because he going, if he stay out there, he going to roll up on the wrong woman. He going to roll up on the wrong one. I'm done. Thank you. 60 seconds, Tay Tay, because I ain't going to, I can't go into overtime tonight. I was say he better be lucky. If that was me, Diva, I would uh, hit him with my big boob purse and then kick it where it hurts so much. It is Whopper, hamburger, hot dog, you name it. That's all. I appreciate you, Tay Tay. Dr. Love, 60 seconds. <laughs> oh, man. All I can say is this is super sad, but mm -hmm. they've been doing this. And as a woman, it just make you not want to wear skirts and dresses in the summer when it's hot, like we used to. So yeah, this is sad. It's very Ooh. sad. I'm the queen of a dress or a skirt. Cat, you're up. I'm with Tay Tay. I would have kicked him where it hurt. That's ridiculous. He's a sicko. And yes, he need to be put in jail. And he need to be with the same type of people that do uh, pedophile stuff. He need to be brought, locked in right with them since he want to be a warrior. Let him go there. It's just ridiculous and nasty and pathetic. And that's all I got for that one, Eva. I'm done. Thank you so much. Um, Sebastian, you're up. Lock him up. Investigate if he ever did anything else at the churches and schools that he would be volunteering at. It's very weird. Put him on the list, the same list that Nicki Minaj's husband's on. Uh, why, why are you gonna do it like that why are you face like that 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 list put him on that list i don't have to say the list's name here um we don't need this man around children we don't need this man anything and parents and, and people download the citizen app it will tell you every time someone on that list moves into your neighborhood and ironically speaking of that i've gotten like five notifications within the five past days of those people moving into my neighborhood please be safe and women, continue wearing skirts. Continue wearing skirts. Just have your taser and your mace with you. Sebastian, what's the name again? The Citizen app. Thank, okay, thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, Emmanuel, you're up. Well, first of all, E is correct. Um, that did happen. Um, I wanted to teleport and beat his ass, but she handled it really well. She really did. Um, it is really gross. I blame P culture. I blame only F culture. Um, it's all a mess. Um, but yeah, it's pretty disgusting. It is disgusting. It, it's a lot of this behavior going on. So, um, P Diddy is not on an island by himself. They just recently brought up and I forgot all about it. Um, I thought his name is slipping my mind right now, but he married his, his adopted daughter. They they brought up his situation again. Hey. 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 Um, you talking about Woody Harrison? Not Woody, Woody Harrison, Woody but Allen? um Woody, Woody Allen. Allen. Woody Allen. I Woody mean. Allen. Oh. oh, I thought you was gonna say Marcus Houston. Okay, continue. Choo choo. Yeah, but you know all of those situations as such. So it's a mess. Yes, Woody Allen. Yeah, I, I forgot all about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anywho, um, let me roll right into our feel good story. It's a nice one. Hold on, guys. Hold on to your seats. Uh, 
Second of our James Beard Award winning series, The Dish. This morning, we head to a Texas restaurant that puts a spin on Southern comfort dishes. As Janet Shamlin shows us, the Houston man behind the greasy spoon is making a name for himself, and not even a life-threatening diagnosis could stop it. To see Max Bozeman now, owning the kitchen and dashing through the dining room. Here you are, man. You'd never know how different life was for him a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Delicious. When he opened the Greasy Spoon Soul Food Bistro in early 2020, he didn't expect the restaurant business to be easy. So mashed potatoes. And he didn't anticipate devastating news months after its launch. You had a life-changing diagnosis. Right after I opened the restaurant, COVID hit. We did great in the business, but then I ended up getting diagnosed with uh, stage three colon cancer. Word of his Southern comfort dishes was spreading quickly. Oxtails, chopstick, pork chops, blackened catfish, herb roasted chicken. Amid glowing reviews. It's so food for real. So you're just getting off your feet. <laughs> right. And then what happened? I mean, I was frozen, you know, paralyzed. Uh, mentally, emotionally, I had to kind of garner that same belief and confidence that I had from an entrepreneur standpoint to now use that to help fight for my life. With family taking over, the father of three started chemotherapy and radiation treatment. Supportive customers kept the place packed. It was incredible. It gave me something to really strive for. Bozeman, now 40 rang the bell in 2021, symbolizing the end of treatment and a new start. Hold on, let me pour the sauce on first. Anxious for our take, those men treated us to a smorgasbord. So this is the soul food stuffed turkey leg. Many dishes are Southern staples with a twist. Those are the crawfish, Buddha, and egg rolls. Sides like mac and cheese, collard greens, and candied yams. Do I need to see a cardiologist tomorrow? No, just eat in moderation. Are served with a sense of humor. I'm going to hand you another spoon because yours looks a little greasy. So this one's not a <laughs> greasy spoon. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, it? mm -hmm. It's not the mac and cheese I made for my <laughs> <laughs> And so we're going to let that cook. In the kitchen, I helped make his favorite dish, the Boss Seafood Stack. Starting with scoops of collard right. greens and rice, it's topped with a fried catfish yeah. filet, which is then topped with a fried lobster tail. And then you're gonna take the shrimp and you just place those on the plate, make them look pretty. To finish. Don't be scared, go ahead. It's smothered in a crab meat cream sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beyond business, Bozeman wants to help others, which is why it was important for him to talk about his cancer and his symptoms. He noticed blood when he went to the bathroom for a long time before he got help. And don't be like me because I had those symptoms for seven or eight months. And you ignored it because? Because I was busy. Um, I was scared to find out what was wrong with me. Um, I felt like other things were more important than me taking care of myself. Now Very feeling great, see, he's got a second location and a food truck, but says the biggest thrill remains serving a plate of whatever he's just cooked. All right, jerk lamb chops, sub mash with mac and greens. How would you describe overcoming cancer and going on to fulfill this dream? There's no end goal. It's just a, a continuous process of being the living proof that you can fight for whatever it is that you desire and you know, you can be a blessing to others while going through your own burden as well. Wisdom gleaned from experience and food that's good for the soul. Perfect. For CBS Mornings, I'm Janet Shamley in Pearland, Texas. I thought that was a good story. We got to go to the doctor, people, take care of yourself, and it's never too late to follow your dreams. Yes, bless him. Especially black men, because I know a lot of, like, a lot of black men, and, and men in general, not just black men, but a lot, mostly black men, we tend to be scared to go to the doctor. We tend to feel uncomfortable. We tend to just not want to. We tend to side play everything, you know, put a Tylenol and that would solve the pain and everything. We have to go to the doctor when we feel something's wrong. We have to speak up because it's better that you're here 
then what the doctor may do to you may feel uncomfortable. It's better that you're here. Absolutely. I agree with you, Sebastian. Thank you so much. Um, God bless the teachers. God bless the teachers. Um, take care of yourself, people out there. Love yourself and um, don't beat your kids. Anyway, guys, if you didn't hit the like button coming in, hit the like button going out. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Y'all got me to 35K. Y'all hanging in there with the diva and I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. And listen, I'm manifesting December 31, 2024. I'm going to get my plaque and be at 100K. I'll see you next time. Love y'all guys. Good night and goodbye, everybody. Do not cheat the diva.